Welcome to another episode of Mythology and Folklore. Today, we are going to talk about Sun Wukong of the Chinese mythology. Our agenda for today is we are going to talk about the mythology and the literature journey to the West, the story of Sun Wukong, and the personality, appearance, preferences, tendencies, beliefs, values, and actions of the character. I am June Arthur A. Binayo, and I am your presenter for today. I am enrolled at the Teacher Education Program of Northern Bukidnon State College, taking up Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English Year 3. Daja Hao. Hello, everyone. I'm sorry if I did not pronounce it right, but I tried my best. Now, let us talk about the mythology and the literature journey to the West. Journey to the West is easily the most famous of all Chinese myths, narrating the many adventures of the legendary monkey king Sun Wukong, one of the most beloved characters in Chinese mythology. The story was written in the 16th century by Wu Chong'an, was based on the pilgrimage of Tang Dynasty monk Xuan Zhang, who traveled to the western regions, in this case, India, in search of Buddhist scriptures. According to researchers, Xuan Zhang had several companion animals during his journey. These pets were given the names Sun Wukong, Zhu Baijie, and Sha Wu Jing accordingly. The magical trio defended Xuan Zhang against a slew of demons, many of whom sought immortality by feasting on the monk. On the monk. The four great classic novels refer to the journey to the West, Water Margin, Romans of the Three Kingdoms, and Dream of the Red Chamber, respectively. These four novels are the most well-known and influential pre-modern Chinese works. When Dream of the Red Chamber was written in the late Qing Dynasty, three of them were written during the Ming Dynasty. Now, China's longevity and resilience are unparalleled among nations with over 4,000 years of recorded history. China is one of the few countries that also flourished economically and culturally during the earliest stages of world civilization. Hence, the literature journey to the West is a product of it. The fictional journey to the West is based on the true journey of Xuan Zhang, the most famous Buddhist monk during the Tang Dynasty. He wanted to find authentic Buddhist doctrines in India where Buddhism originated and to solve the incompleteness and misinterpretation in China's Buddhist texts. The book Great Tang Records on the Western Regions contains an excerpt from one of his journals. So, as you can see, there we have a timeline of the dynasties of China here, specifically highlighting the Tang Dynasty established in 1618 that lasted until 906 Common Era, and the other one is the Ming Dynasty, started in 1368 and lasted until 1644. The Journey to the West, written by Chong An Wu in the late Ming Dynasty, is widely regarded as the best work among those. It combines the journey of Xuan Zhang and, uh, and his apprentices with myths, folklore, poems, and philosophy. As a result of its complexity, Wu's version is the most entertaining among the four great literatures. Now finally, the story of Sun Wukong. In the great Chinese classic Journey to the West, one of the most famous primary characters in world literature appears, Sun Wukong, an immortal rhesus macaque demon who rebels against heaven's supremacy. The monkey, unlike his western counterparts, repents and becomes a Buddhist monk in the later part of the story. 
Monkey King is an allegorical retelling of the journey, mingled with Chinese fables, fairy tales, legends, superstitions, popular beliefs, monster stories, and whatever else the author could find in the Taoist, Buddhist, and popular Chinese religions. While ordinary readers are captivated by the Monkey King's prowess and wisdom, many reviewers agree that the protagonist embodies what the author was attempting to convey to his readers, a rebellious spirit against the then untouchable feudal rulers. The historical Xuanzang brought back real sutras to, to China, which are now kept at the Great Wild Goose Pagoda in Xi'an or Chang'an. This ancient structure is one of the ancient capital's most popular tourist attraction. So as you can see on the picture on the right, I can see the big wild goose pagoda of Xi'an just behind the, immortal, the immortalized statue of Xuanzang. Now finally, the story. The first early chapters of Journey to the West. Sun Wukong wreak havoc in heaven after achieving great power through magical cultivation in these chapters. He was also given the magical Rui Bang, a wondrous schedule that could change size. The artifact was stolen by Sun from the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea. Sun was only subdued after failing Gautama Buddha's challenge. The Buddha invited Sun to somersault out of his palm, which the arrogant monkey king dismissed because he could leap thousands of miles in a single bound. Sun Wukong was eventually unable to leave the heart of the Buddha's paw. As punishment for his mischief, Sun was imprisoned for 500 years under a magical mountain formed by the Buddha's paw. His final atonement after release was then to accompany and protect Xuan Zhang during the latter's pilgrimage. This mission in turn sets the premise for the rest of the saga. In total, Xuan Zhang and his disciples also weathered a total of 72 calamities before reaching the West in the process, battling and defeating thousands of demons. Surprisingly, the most well-known parts of Journey to the West are not these events, but the first chapters, which focus on Sun Wukong's solo, solo adventures. As you can see on the picture on the right, it depicts the scenario when Sun Wukong was released by Xuan Zhang from the magical mountain through, of course, the direction of the deity Guan Yin. In continuation, chapters 13 to 100 describe how 600 years later, Sun is released during the Tang Dynasty to accompany the Buddhist monk Tripitaka or Suan Zhang, a disciple of the Buddha in a previous life, on a quest to retrieve salvation bestowing scriptures from India. Guan Yin bestows three magical hairs on the back of monkey's neck that can transform into anything he desires in order to assist him in protecting the monk. On a side note, Guan Yin is a bodhisattva, a person motivated by supreme compassion who is referred to as a potential Buddha in training. She is associated with Mahayana Buddhists. This individual is commonly known as the Goddess of Mercy, and her main aspect is compassion. Guan Yin, in Chinese Buddhism and folklore, gained popularity as she had a a significant impact on Chinese Buddhism and folklore. She became a bridge between complicated intellectual concepts and the simple people who followed the lady in white with more attention than they gave a philosopher. In ancient times, Chinese society was based on ideas of purity, so Guan Yin easily became an iconic female symbol. To continue the story, Along the way, the two encounter other monsters turned disciples, including Zhu Baijie, the lecherous pig demon, Sha Wu Jing, the complacent water demon, and the white dragon horse, Bai Lung Ma, a royal serpent transformed into a queen who agreed to help the monk defend himself. Finally, he receives Buddhahood and the title of victorious fighting Buddha, this is referring to Sun Wukong, 
for his efforts in defending Tripitaka during the long journey. On your right, you can see the picture of them arriving at Vulture Peak, where they were immortalized. Now, let us talk about the personality, appearance, preferences, tendencies, beliefs, values, and actions of our main character. Appearance and Personality Wu Kuang used his tricks early in the novel for no one's benefit but his own. The Monkey King revealed his true trickster nature in the first eight chapters of the journey to the West. Wu Kuang immediately used his immortality and supernatural power to obtain his weapon, honorific title and reputation after achieving immortality and supernatural power. The hunger for reputation is always one of Wu Kuang's primary motives. Even after his conversion, Wu Kuang still cares about his reputation tremendously. According to Xi Ji Ying, a trickster is a figure whose physical appetite dominates his behavior. In other words, a trickster always has abnormal desires for food, sex, pleasure, reputation, or political power. We can always find at least one element from Maslow's hierarchy of needs that drives him to trick. Jung went on to say in Man and his symbols that a trickster has the mentality of an infant. He can be cruel, cynical, and selfish because he is only concerned with, it, with his own gratification. And as the name implies, a trickster usually achieves his objectives through deceptive means. And this is true when Sun Wukong deceived the son of the dragon king who lives in the eastern sea into getting his armor. Now let's go to his tendencies and actions. Wu Kong's difficulties, according to the research of Wan Liang Lu, were unavoidable in his respective authoritarian society. He had to use as many resources as he could because his appetite was difficult to properly feed. However, we can see from this story that the social authorities impose boundaries and limits on his behavior and appetites. Such constraints were intolerable for tricksters who had no concept of social order. He had to challenge the authorities to satisfy his expanding egos. In the coded stories, his dominating appetite rather than his bravery was responsible for his challenging spirit. This, this is described in the first eight chapters of the story. Almost all tricksters challenge authority. Tricksters are tricksters as adversaries of boundaries, dislike the lines drawn by authority. Such, such tendencies and actions were displayed before Su Wukong was punished, as I have mentioned before, by the Enlightened One, Gautama Buddha. Let's go to his preferences, beliefs, and values. The novel is constructed in a manner that is amalgamating three religions. Such religions are deeply rooted in Chinese culture. So Monkey King, as a Chinese hero, is a blend of Confucianism, Buddhism, and Taoism. Wu Kong's moral code, according to Lin Gong, a respected researcher of Chinese literatures, is not even close to Buddhism. Wu Kong, as a Chinese cultural hero, must embrace Confucianism because the philosophy has dominated mainstream ideology for thousands of years. Wu Kong, however, is not your typical Confucian hero, as most of them sacrifice their lives for career and morality. Wu Kong is one of the few Confucian heroes whose stories end happily. Now, his unconditional loyalty to Xuan Zhang can be considered filial piety, as filial piety is the most important moral value in Confucianism. This this can be seen when the change of character of Sun Wukong can be seen when he was released by Swan, by Xuan Zhang from the from his imprisonment under the mountain. 
This is true, of course, to the direction of the deity Wan Yin. In an analysis of Parisan, she says, Rebellion is simple. Achievement is difficult. Revolution is simple. Reform is difficult. Destroying is simple. Constructing is difficult. Only bravery and talent can propel one to the status of legendary retaliator. It takes wisdom, persistence, and a lot of teammates to advance to the level of achiever. Such is an outstanding metaphor, which also resonates with me, because Sun Wukong is definitely a beloved hero. Let us continue on preferences, beliefs, and values. Wukong is considered a Buddhist hero. His primary identities are that of a Buddhist pilgrim and a seeker of scripture. In the ninth chapter, Wukong abandons Taoism and becomes a Buddhist monk, later becoming the Buddha victorious in strife. Buddhism is his ultimate goal, and also the journey's frame and geography is borrowed from Buddhism. Accordingly, it is only Taoism that you can achieve immortality. But since Sun Wukong was taken into the tutelage of Xuanzang, then there is a gradual shift of belief from Sun Wukong. Unlike lofty gods, Wukong is a less abstract character. Readers can see more than one side of Wukong, not just his stricter, trickster side. He has mortal emotions despite being an immortal. His joy, anxiety, anger, and sense of humor make him seem like a regular person from our everyday lives. His experiences are typical of the universal trickster cycle. We can see his entire character development from a childish trickster to a mature cultural hero. Sun Wukong is revered today by many Chinese as the Fighting Buddha, or the Great Sage Equal in Heaven. Sun's official Taoist title in the story. So as you can see, Sun Wukong's exploits are immortalized in him being deified. So I think this is the most significant character development in the mythology of Sun Wukong. So if you are interested to study more, I have included her here, References. Xia Xia Ni, thank you very much for tuning in.